whole wheat bread versus white whole wheat bread. What's the difference? Is one better? Let's find out. All right, so you may be wondering, what the heck is white whole wheat? Well, I was wondering the same thing myself. And right here on the back of this package, I found out the difference. So normal whole wheat, what we traditionally think of whole wheat uh, flour, is made from red wheat, yep. where white whole wheat is made from a light colored grain, uh, which they call winter wheat. Winter wheat, yep. This is a hard wheat, this is like a, a softer. So. Uh, the, the difference is basically just the kernels. It's a different are type of wheat. Different colors, that's all. Yeah. But supposedly, this is a little, like the whole wheat is a little nuttier and heartier and stronger in flavor, and the white whole wheat is lighter, paler, and a more mild flavor. Now, we've experimented a little bit here and there. I've never done a true side-by-side, -side, but I can tell you that there is definitely a difference. Um, so let's just get to it and make some bread. Now these are both from um, King Arthur Flour, so that way we are equal in dignity as far as quality goes. Mm -hmm. And neither one of them are bleached, so don't think because this is white that that oh, refers yeah. bleaching. There is no bleaching. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna make like a six ounce loaf for each. So I actually like to work in grams better. So if it makes life any harder for everybody, I'm really sorry, but I'm gonna work in grams. Also, I do everything by weight when it comes to bread because there is a science behind it and it's important. So we're gonna do 150 grams of this flour. Of course, if you are making bread for yourself at home and you wanna make a larger loaf, you certainly can use more if you want to, totally fine. So 150, that was the white whole wheat. Yep. And now let's do the regular whole wheat. You'll immediately see the difference in color. I mean, they're rather obviously different. Spilled some. I always do. Okay, so let's just put those over there for now. And let me hold them up to the camera so you can actually see. Yeah, this one right here is the regular whole wheat. And then this is the white whole wheat. And they're obviously very different in color. So let's start adding some water to these. And I'm going to be using the Baker's Math method, which is where you use a percentage of the amount of water by weight to the amount of flour. That's why I like to use grams, just because it makes it all so much easier. So uh, before we add water though, let's add some salt. And for that, I'm just gonna do, let's say three grams of salt. You don't, I don't go too crazy with salt in my breads. Okay. All right, and now yeast. And for yeast, I'm gonna go with three to four grams, and that's it. Just so that they're the same. I usually just eyeball all of this maybe even two grams of yeast. It's really all we need for this size loaf. Just so you're aware, the recipe here isn't crucial, but it is actually a pretty decent recipe. It's pretty much the way I make bread all the time. Okay, now that we have all of our dry ingredients in, I'm just gonna give it a mix. Just wanna evenly disperse everything in both. I'm not worried about the very slight amount of cross-contamination that's gonna happen by using the same spatula for both. Don't worry about it. This isn't a true scientific test. It's really just a, which comes out what way? You know, that's all it is. So we have both now. And this is the whole wheat. This is the white whole wheat. And let's go with like a, I'm gonna say 85% hydration, which sounds crazy high, but when you're using whole wheat flours, it's not unusual. You know what? I'm even gonna go 90% hydration. Let me explain. So 90% of 150 is actually, let me get a calculator out and figure that out. It's 135. What that means, 90% hydration, is we're using 90% of the weight in water as we have in flour. So I have 150 grams of flour, therefore I need 135 grams of water. So let me just add that and 135 grams in here. And that's all I need to scale for. So all of this precision was really just to make two of the same recipe, one using whole wheat, one using white wheat. And now I'm just gonna mix them up. I wanna make sure that everything is hydrated. There are different ratios and hydration levels for different types of flour. We have worked with whole wheat flour before, and we found that it's thirsty. Oh yeah. And by As that, you... I mean it's gonna absorb the water way faster than mm. uh, a processed wheat would. Yeah, all the fiber and bran that's in a whole wheat flour definitely absorbs a lot of water. Um, it's not unusual with like bread flours to do like 60% hydration for pizza doughs and things like that. You can't do that with a whole wheat flour. It'll be stiff as a rock. You won't be able to really knead it much at all. Speaking of kneading, 
This is going to be a no need method. I'm actually gonna use my stretch and fold method to make this. So let me just get this made into a, a ball here. As you can see it dried up. It's not, it's not overly wet by any means. I would actually go so far as to say you could probably do 100% hydration on these and be fine. But we're gonna go with 90 today because that's what I started. So I'm sticking to it. Notice I haven't even touched this dough yet. I love making breads this way where I don't really mess with it too much. You'll see in a minute though. Okay, so there's one ready to go. And now I'm trying to keep them on the same side so that I don't mix them up, even though it'd be hard to mix these up. Already there's a huge difference in color. The, the regular whole wheat is definitely like reddish, brownish, you know, what you expect whole wheat to look like. The white whole wheat looks more like a bread flour. What I've experienced in using it is that it works kind of like a cross between bread flour and whole wheat flour. It's somewhere in the middle. It's neither and both at the same time. The white whole wheat is actually a little uh, stickier. It definitely didn't soak up as much water, so that's interesting. By the way, the, the fiber content on these, the protein content and all that, very, very similar. So just looking at them, this happens to be the organic version of the white whole wheat because we couldn't find the regular. Um, I found it before, but we couldn't find it this time. They say per quarter cup, which is roughly 28 grams. So this would be like six servings, okay? According to this. Uh, zero grams of fat in the white whole wheat, 0.5 grams of fat in the regular whole wheat. So a little bit more fat, but I found in the other one, the non-organic, that it's actually the same. Um, this particular one, we have three grams of fiber versus three grams of fiber. So they're even for both. And then the white has three grams of protein and the regular whole wheat has four grams of protein. So very, very, very similar. I mean, if you compare that to a white flour, they're both miles better as far as nutrient content for cooking with. So now what I'm gonna do is let these sit for 15 minutes and we'll be back to show you stretch and folds. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes and now it's time to do our first, what I call stretch and fold. And this is how I build the gluten structure in my breads. It also lets you use a much higher hydration level so you get an airier bread in the end. Works great for whole wheat breads. First thing you wanna do is dip your hand in some water and I submerge all the way up to the pads of my, the palms because you're gonna get your whole hand in there. Let it drip off and then I get inside here and I pick it up and give it a pull and then slap it down halfway on top of itself. Turn it 90 degrees, wet your hand again if you need to, pick it up, let it fall about, fall a little bit. You don't want it to break, and then slap it on top of itself. Wet your hand again, turn it 90 degrees again, lift up, stretch. You can already see a difference in this exact batch that I have, it does add a little bit more water to the bread. So that's uh, an unknown, but since we're gonna do the same amount of stretch and folds on both, I think it's a, an acceptable difference. They are already very, very different. And then I, I just like to form it into a little bit of a ball, bring it back together, and then we let that sit for 10 more minutes. And on the other one, this one is a little bit softer already. It's not as firm as the first one. So let me get my hand totally wet here and pick it up, stretch a little, slap it on top, turn 90 degrees, wet my hand, get in there again, pick it up, stretch it a little, slap it on top, turn 90 degrees, wet my hand, get in there, stretch it a little bit, slap it on top, and another 90 degrees. I didn't need to wet my hand again, it was fine. But you see it starts to stick all over the place, and then I just wanna shape it back into a rough ball and wait another 15 minutes. Okay, 15 more minutes have gone by. Time for another stretch and fold. And it's basically the same thing, but I'd wanna show you a little bit. There is already a significant difference in the doughs. This one, the whole wheat one, is just getting a little more stretchy. It's definitely more uh, firm than the white whole wheat, but they're both quite soft and pliable. I mean, you can see it. And I just, all four sides, 90 degrees, the whole deal, every time but the gluten is definitely forming. Now, alternately, you could knead this if you really want to. I just, I like doing it this way. It just seems to uh, give a better, lighter bread in the end, so that's why I do it this way. Form it into a ball, and we're good to go. 
Next one, same thing. Probably don't need as much water on this one. It's definitely holding together well, though. <laughs> They're both actually working very, very well. This one's quite a bit softer, though. Definitely softer already. Put gluten's forming in both. Form it back into a ball, which is an optional step. I just, it's a habit. I just do it all the time. And 15 more minutes. Okay, 15 more minutes. You guessed it. Another stretch and fold. At this point, it's really nice and soft. <laughs> really good gluten formation. See how it's, it's not even really falling under its own weight. There are some bubbles popping in there too. I can feel it. It's starting to actually rise. I think I will just do a fourth stretch and fold because I usually like to do four, so I'll do it. It doesn't feel like it's needed though. I don't know. Might not even need a fourth one, but I'm gonna do it anyway, just to be thorough. Now the white wheat dough is much softer, much, much softer. Probably because it ended up with a little bit more hydration than the other one, because it didn't soak in quite as much as the uh, regular whole wheat did. But from a feel perspective, the white wheat feels more like a bread flour bread would be. It's got a little bit of that graininess still, but um, it feels really nice. So, so far I have high hopes that the white wheat is gonna be a better bread. Now, better is also perspective. Some people really, really like whole wheat bread and they like the flavors. I tend to like white bread better, but I know that it's not as good for me, so that's why we're doing this. Another usage, perhaps, for this white whole wheat is in pasta. Yep. We have tried making pasta with the whole wheat with moderate success. Uh, but that graininess that Brian spoke yeah, of gets just away there. when you're trying to make pasta. Where We did yes. make ravioli with the white wheat, that was, and that it was, was actually yeah. great. It, it came out wonderful. So let's go another 15 minutes, last stretch and fold. Be back in a minute. And as you can see by looking in here, they have risen quite a bit, but it is time for our final stretch and fold. Now, can you do more if you really want to? Sure, but it kind of doesn't really do much for you once you've done three or four of them. If you feel the need to do more, like if it doesn't feel like it's come together, then do more. But see how this is holding and it's springy and bouncy? Doesn't need more. That gluten is fully formed. I, I don't even really need as much water anymore to do it because the gluten makes it not as sticky. Then I'm just gonna form that into a little bit of a ball. Get a little water on my hands for this one, huh? They are very, very different in feel though. This, the white wheat feels lighter and looser. It doesn't feel as springy. Like there, it feels like maybe the gluten formed a little bit better in the whole wheat, but I think it could just be wetter in the white wheat, which may affect rise by the way too. So this isn't a perfectly scientific test. I just wanted to make the same recipe twice and see what the difference would be. And part of the differences in the construction or perhaps recipe adjustment is part of the test. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would probably use more more water on the whole wheat to match this if I really wanted to make a perfect test because they are going to be slightly different. But really, at the end of the day, I want to see texture and flavor, which Do you that's want to pop that I, I, there's a big <laughs> bubble there. It popped. It's gone now. And uh, just form that into a ball. And now I'm going to cover these up and let them sit for a one hour to fully rise. So after one hour, as you can see, they have both risen a lot. I would say, even though it doesn't look like it in the bowls, they are approximately equal in dignity. So what we wanna do now is start shaping them so that we can move on to the baking phase. Let me go grab a sheet pan with some parchment paper for the baking. So this is what we're gonna bake on. It's just a cookie sheet with some parchment. I'll just put that out of the way for the moment. So. Whole wheat is first. Can you hang on to that for a second? Should we call it red whole wheat and white whole wheat? Would that be better? Red and white, I like it. Okay. And I'm just getting like a, a handful of that whole wheat flour and spreading it out on our cutting board, shaping board for today. This application of flour is com more commonly known as bench flour. Yes. So basically you're flouring your bench, or in this case, the cutting board, to right. work upon. And then. Get your dough out of the bowl. Usually it falls. There it goes. And then, there's just a little bit in the bottom of the bowl. We'll just get those out. And what I wanna do is take a scraper and start to kinda shove some of that 
flour underneath the edges so I can manipulate the You dough. want to make sure that the dry flour is always in between whatever service you're working on and this loaf. Yep. This is the shaping phase. And there's a lot of different ways to shape bread. This is just the way I do it. So I have it out flat. I'm just gonna start rolling it up. Yes, a little bit of the flour does get into the middle and that is okay. It'll actually get absorbed, it's fine. If you see any big bubbles, break them up. And notice I just made a torpedo shape. And now what I wanna do is just get underneath that edge on the end, and underneath that edge on the end, because I'm making like a sub roll or a, a French loaf. See all these bubbles? You wanna break those, otherwise they make weird shapes in your bread. And now I wanna start adding some compression, some stress to that dough, some, uh, whoop, another bubble. When he's what doing I'm doing his, is just compressing it. Yeah, he's, he's tucking in the edges so that way the skin has some tension. And this is going to really tension. help That's with the, the bread's form and structure. Because what will happen is as it starts to rise in the oven, and even before it gets in the oven, that tension will hold it so it'll push and it should make a nice even shape across the whole thing. Okay, and now... If I can get you to just hold that tray for me. I'm gonna cook them both on the same sheet. So I'm just gonna lift it up, put it over. Do that kind of quick or else it'll start to fall apart in your hands. And I'm gonna add a little bit more tension to all four sides. I wanna get the ends too. Because if the ends go too narrow, they get very crispy before the rest of it is even cooked. So I wanna make sure that it's more or less a solid shape. And there we go. If you've ever baked a loaf of bread before and you had like one section kind of do a weird blowout kind of thing, it's probably because you didn't create that tension. Yep. I don't normally waste flour like this. In this case, don't want to cross contaminate our flours. Now we got the white wheat. Again, put out a handful. It even feels different. It actually feels a little more fine than the red wheat does. There's probably a botanical reason of why there's a difference between the winter wheat and the red wheat based on their fiber uh, nutrients of the different times of year and whatnot. I have not investigated that, but because I am the gardening person, I'm very curious. All right, this one had a little bit inside too. Sometimes you get a little bit stuck inside the bowl, so you just like that little bit. That's like half a bite of bread, you know? You don't want to lose that. And again, same thing. I just want to get some flour under it. This one's a little stickier. Now you can see here all the holes and the strands that's yep. showing both the fermentation of the yeast being active and the gluten formation with the strands. You did know that rising is a fermentation, right? It's making gas. It's actually the yeast consuming the sugars or the starches in the, the dough itself and creating gas. They, they do actually create a small amount of alcohol too, but it evaporates really, really quickly because there's nothing to hold it. And same idea, I just wanna stretch this out a little bit and start to roll it up. If at first, when you're rolling it up, it starts to fall apart on you, it's okay. You can make it into a ball again, flatten it out and do it. Don't worry about losing much of the air that's in there. It's gonna rise again. Um, and don't be too critical on yourself. Brian has been making bread for a ridiculously- 25 years? <laughs> at and this least, is... at least. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Longer than that. Yeah. Um, and this is just a simple, quick one. I'm not being too fastidious about it. Normally I'm pretty careful about the way they look. As long as you laid your ingredients at the beginning, the process is thereafter, just do the best that you can. Yeah. And you should probably come out with a perfectly Service Usually, roll. even if they don't look good, they're still edible. Yeah. And that's that's the idea. Yeah. Okay, can you flip that around so Absolutely. that I have the other side? All right. And then I'm gonna lift it up. Yeah, this is definitely a much softer loaf than the first one. It's definitely softer, and I just wanna get them as even as possible with tension and everything. You can over tension. If you do too much tensioning, you'll actually restrict it from growing and you'll get blowouts because the skin will break. So be careful. You want just a little bit. I like to push it under just a touch so that it doesn't stick to the uh, board too much and it gives it a way to go up. Because what'll happen is if you don't, sometimes it'll just flatten out yeah. so you get a, a longer thin like bread rather than going upward. So be careful on that. They what's, both feel pretty good though. What's interesting to me, and I think you can see it from that point of view, yeah. 
is that you can definitely tell which is which. This is definitely the oh, red yeah. wheat, and this is definitely the white wheat. Absolutely. There's a huge difference. And now what we want to do is set our oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll put the Celsius right here and let these rest covered while that happens. I actually stick this tray in our microwave. I don't turn the microwave on, I just stick it in the microwave. It's a nice draft-free environment and this tray fits in there perfectly. So that's how we do it because one of our cats likes to eat raw dough. I don't know why, but he does. Yeah. And he finds it every time. So anyway, so roughly half an hour or so to rise, then we'll be back to show you the next step. All right, one hour has gone by. They've risen a little bit. Our oven is preheated to 450 degrees Fahrenheit and I have bread shears. Some people like to use a knife or a razor and slice the bread. I can never get that to work right, so I actually use scissors. And I just go like that, and I just make my cuts. Now the trick to this is you want to get this in the oven immediately after doing this. I'm not going to have that opportunity because I have to walk all the way over there. But I'm going to go do it right now, in the oven, 22 minutes. Okay, so they baked. I did 22 minutes, which is my usual time for breads of this type at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, your oven and time may vary, so at like 20 minutes, start checking on it. At this point, do not be tempted to cut into them oh, immediately yeah. no. because that's gonna cause some structural integrity issues. Well, they're still technically cooking a little bit in the middle, okay? And all those, all those proteins and everything have to form and set. So you wanna give it some time. If you watch carefully, if I pick this one up, it squeezes ever so slightly. If I pick this one up, it squeezes a little bit more. Yeah. I didn't do that very softer. long because they're really hot because they just yeah, came out of the oven. And I have them on a wire rack to cool. We're going to give these about half an hour, maybe 40 minutes or so. And then we'll come back to show you what they look like inside. I believe you can tell even from your perspective that red. this is the red white. and this is the white. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely a difference in color. Um, they both look like great breads though. I and they see. smell delicious. Oh, really, really do. But what I want to point out too is they rose about the same. At first I thought that the white was just flattening out. It seems to, but then it rose up. So it feels like the white may have given a little bit more of a, a spring once in the oven, but we'll find out. When we cut into them in just a moment. Okay, they've been sitting for a while, close to like an hour. So what I want to do is just cut in half roughly, and I'm gonna cut off a slice so that we can inspect and taste. Decent crumb. This is the red wheat. I'm just gonna take a thin slice out of bread. Because the rest of these can become sandwiches and bruschetta later. All right. So right off the bat, I do see that there is a size difference. The white wheat definitely uh, rose a bit more. Similar crumb um, though. There's slightly more airy crumb slightly, on the white. Not that much. 10% more maybe. We'll do a close up uh, still so you can see the comparison. Okay, so you should see the picture of the crumb and know what they look like. And now I'm just gonna break these in half. So we each have- One for half. you, one yeah. for me. You. I mean, right off the bat, don't drop it. <laughs> The whole wheat, the red, is definitely a firmer texture. The other one is softer. Yep, yep. See, I can, I can squoosh. They actually smell very, very similar. Yeah. They smell like bread. Yeah, they smell almost identical. Mm -hmm. I would imagine this, the aroma would probably be more different if we allowed the yeast to ferment more because- Possibly. The yeast, create more of aroma than right. the flour itself. On the flavor and texture on the whole wheat, the red wheat, it's good. Mm. The white is much lighter, like a much more airy feel, even though they don't look tremendously different. There is a difference. Yeah, the white is much closer to a regular like bread loaf Bread, bread flour loaf, whereas the red is definitely a little heavier, a little yeah, nuttier. Yeah, more dense structure mm -hmm. and texture and flavor in the red than I am the white. Uh, not that this is a dense bread by any no, means. No, it's no. actually nice and light, but. It's actually a nice, a nice loaf for mm -hmm. a whole wheat. It's quite lovely. Um, 
And I can't really tell you which one is better because I think this is really going to be on a personal preference. Yeah. I know some people really enjoy the dense, almost nutty sensation. Yeah, like pumpernickel breads and stuff like that. Um, where others like more of a light, airy of the white wheat. If you're looking to replicate a a white or traditional, air yeah. quote, bread in a whole wheat format, then I would say definitely the try thing. the white whole wheat uh, flour. Yeah, it's, it's a little it's, more pricey and a little harder to find, but uh -huh. definitely worth the difference. I mean, you can just, you can see the difference, you can taste the difference, you can feel it. Everything about it is just, it's closer to that, like, bread flour bread. Um, has a nice tooth to it. Everything about it is just great. Right. But if you are a fan of the dense whole wheat scenario, then just yeah. stick with the red whole wheat. It'll do just fine. And yep. this this bread recipe, as you saw, was quite easily created and made some beautiful loaves. Yeah. So um, go make more bread. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on The, the Bistro. Bistro.